let's kick off then with this whole how to build an app question. So that's, that's the first piece of learning, that Google Play is a much easier environment to get your app into than the App Store. I mean, that's how I learned to do an app. I, you know, when I went to college, there was no apps. There was not really any phones, actually. Uh, there was electricity, though, and, you know, things like that. But there were no phones. So when we started to build an app, you get out Google, and you literally Google how to build an app. And you learn very quickly. This is the Apple development environment, Xcode. Um, which contains, you know, lots of information. Um, who can tell me how long, you know, the first iPhone came out about 2006. So we're about seven years into apps, you know, this, so there's quite a lot of knowledge out there in terms of how to do it. Xcode is a much, much more sophisticated environment than the first apps that were built. Then you have the Android, and this, incredibly, is something that only came out last year, a proper uh, environment. Um, the tools that you need is what's called an IDE, or an Integrated Development Environment. That's basically the, the interface that you have to build an app. And, you know, there are IDEs that come from Android, and there are IDEs that come from iOS, or you can use a third-party product. Um, so the, the advantages of having third-party products sometimes are that you can develop something in a third-party product and then push it uh, to the Apple, or you can also push it towards Android. Uh, the advantages of um, developing in the Xcode are you know, what Christian was talking about in terms of the standards. Uh, if you develop something in Xcode, it's much more likely to, you know, be accepted by the App Store, and then uh, the process of getting accepted by the App Store is actually quite complicated. You know, it can take, there's a whole pile of things they don't accept, not just, you know, gambling and pornography. There's also things like Bitcoin. So it's actually quite a sophisticated uh, process, but one that has very little actual feedback. So you could get uh, denied access to the App Store and without having, you know, an awful lot of information as to why that actually happened. Um, in contrast, Google Play, um, you know, it's getting faster all the time. I mean, I've seen apps get accepted immediately. Uh, that is a very different situation to what happens with websites that you can, you know, push them out and immediately they're live. Uh, that's something that is a, a big contrast between the web environment when it was first set up, that you could just push something you know, onto um, your ISP and it would be live. There is a kind of a gateway, and it's one of the biggest problems uh, with the app environment, that you have this sort of gateway, and you never quite know when, you're, when your tools are, are published. Um, I'll go back to that in a second, but just in terms of the choices that you make, this is roughly where we are in the world in terms of um, market share. You know, you can see Android, for instance, is much, much higher. There are much more Android devices out there. And you can see iOS is much lower. And you can see BlackBerry is disappearing. You can see it going up. I always like the <coughs> snigger, like, you know. And then Windows is kind of disappearing as well, even though they, you know, Nokia, the Lumina, for instance, is quite a strong, it's a lovely piece of hardware for a start. And then you have others that are, you know, could be anything. But does that surprise people in terms of, um, you know, where the, you know, I guess the big issue with this is that, uh, for instance, in hot hotels, we make probably 70% of our money on from, from the iPhone. In other words, even though the, in the world there are much more Android devices, the people with iPhones tend to buy more. So uh, I don't know, it's changing all the time, but for that reason, people tend to develop first for the iPhone. There's also a sort of a thing that if you can get uh, the iPhone, if you can get that right, you know, that's the harder challenge, uh, and then you can sort of move on to Android. Um, 
What's the problem with Android? The problem with Android is, is what's called flavors and also devices, which is even the version of, of Hot Hotels and Android, there are just so many possibilities. We literally have to get maybe the top 25 phones that are out there, you know, the, the Samsungs, all the different ones, and test our app on every single one of them. And there are different reactions based on the, for instance, the other apps people have installed, the sizes of their memory, uh, the version of Android they have installed. It's a very, very complicated environment in order to create a standardized product. Uh, and it's very difficult, you know, I often get feedback from family members to say like, I tried your app and it crashed, you know, and I kind of went, do you know how many flavors of Android? And it's not an acceptable answer because they just want your product to work. They're like, I just, you know, I walk into El Corte Inglés, I buy the product. They don't start, you know, you don't go up to El Corte Inglés and they start saying, oh, we have flavors of cash registers or something like that. It's, it's, that's not what they want. So that's kind of the, the first thing to, to notice that, um, you know, both of the environments, the big environments create their own developer tools, which are now pretty extensive, much more so than they were at the start. Um, Android Studio is a relatively recent one, but it's, it's, it's getting together. Um, there are much more Android phones in the world, but the people who have Apple tend to sell more, which is sort of still happening. Uh, and also there are environments for Windows and BlackBerry, but uh, we actually have a BlackBerry uh, version of Hot Hotels which is mainly a port from one of the other versions, so it isn't a native, um, it isn't a native construction.